everyone. Welcome to Love at First anyway, Laugh. I um, am so excited today because I have a wonderful guest. I've known her for years. She has done so much. She has been, I'm going to read it because I don't want to miss anything. She's been on Last Comic Standing, Comics Unleashed, The Late Late Show, and check this out. She worked as a creative consultant on Wanda Sykes comedy special. What? I can't wait to talk to this lady. Please welcome Dana Eagle. Hi, Yay! Dana. Hello. Hello, Bridget Bardot. <laughs> it's so weird. That's fantastic. I was but just writing my the person that helps me with the social networking stuff, and I'm like, I think I shared it, but I don't know if I did. Can you oh, double check it for me? No I worries. I'll, I can share it afterwards. Don't worry about it. Okay. Did you, did you share it though? I think I did. I did hit something that said share. See, people think yeah. they see the glasses and they're like, she could run all the computer oh. stuff. Actually, you're not a nerd, but I am a nerd. So it's like, I know. right? I, I'm a nerd. I'm not like a software visionary nerd. I'm more like a walk into a plate glass window nerd. <laughs> we're not as celebrated. Oh, this is not as celebrated. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get calls from friends like, I don't know how to do this. I'm like, you know, I spent with another comic like two hours helping him, you know, like StreamYard and Zoom with his podcast. Yes, two hours. That's yeah. the friend limit. Friend limit is two hours. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like wow. <laughs> if yeah. It's, if it's a job that like I typically get paid for, yeah. You know, like writing or something like that. That's it's like two to three hours unless they've got unless they've got stuff in the bank for me. You know, because yeah, totally. friends, friends always they start out with I'll pay you. And it's like, yeah, I'm, that's going to be comfortable, you know, between friends accepting your money. Sure. Exactly. Especially when, you know, you know, another comic, they don't have a lot of money. So, right. It yeah. is very awkward. But I know I'm that kind of friend. I'll spend two hours helping. But. I know I said it. I am screwed forever because I've, yeah. I've hid my nerdiness for a long time. The mistake was was letting people know you had skills. You should have just been like, "Oh, I, I hire someone." There you go. See, yeah. I should have. I need to call you every time I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> I need to give you a call because you will definitely stop me. Well, you totally focused my life with one line that you said on stage. Do you remember this? Do you remember I, I what you I said? Because yeah. I think I've brought it up to you a few times where you just go, I think you were in, I, I don't know if it was like a regular line you were using. I kind of got that you were, you had just sort of had it that week and you just got up there and you're just like, uh, no rule, people aren't fun, bye-bye. You're so <laughs> fun, bye-bye, I don't need you. And it was just yeah. like, I'm not like it's, it has like my nerdiness and sweetness to it, but it was so final the way you said it, there was no room for flexibility. And I was no. like, now when people are too much, I'm just like, bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah, we share DNA, but you know, hopefully I won't need a kidney. I don't know. I love it. I live to serve, really. I mean, if that inspired you, I. I am, I feel like I've accomplished a lot, you know, I, I want to inspire. I'm very final. Like, are you flexible? Like, do you, do you change your mind or are you like me? Like once you make up your mind about something, you're like, that's it. I, I'm in this, like, uh, yeah, I'm indecisive. And so I, but I have those moments when I've had it and yeah. I always look at it from the other side too. Well, what are they seeing? Are they seeing something different than me? And it's like, now I'm just, it's such a female quality, you know, because so, it's really second guessing yourself. And the key thing that I learned is that somebody doesn't have to be wrong or offend you for you to decide to move away from them. You just be like, not working for me. Totally. Yeah. And you can do it. I think, yeah, as females, you're right. We, and especially female comics, because we want fans. So we kind of put up with a lot of shit. <laughs> I want to show you my dick. Oh, sure. Nice dick. Yeah. Uh, not. I'm not, I did that today. I'm not kidding. Cause I didn't really true story. Yeah. Yeah. I was like a nice dick. I mean, what are, what are you going to say? 
I was like, no, okay, thank you for for the uh, for sharing. That's so. Wait, and was that via an email, via live text. text? Text. See, but that's a potential fan, so that's yeah. I just put up. <laughs> but it's weird because usually um, men are willing to pay women to see their bodies, but yeah, you're hoping. You're like willing to see it if there's some cash at the bottom of it. Girl. Or totally. a follower. <laughs> Holy, see, you gave me. I love you. <laughs> or a follower. What follower? That's a lot. One, yeah. he has to buy some merch. Oh, he definitely. Merch? If, listen, if they show you their dick, they have to buy at least my books. Right. Or totally. subscribe, be a monthly subscriber. That's right. Subscribe to my OnlyFans for the podcast. Absolutely. Oh, they have to do something. I'm going to start a page on my website where I go, <laughs> if you want to show Grace your dick, <laughs> you have to buy one of my CDs first. Because no guy really wants to show me his dick. But they might want to show you. And so I'll just be like, <laughs> I feel like this, what am I saying on Facebook? I'm going to be like, this is going to come up and now I can't run for office. It's official. <laughs> oh, honey, that happened for me a long time ago. I mean, come on, we're comics. We're never going to be able to run for anything. No. I, why would I? Then you need a lot of followers and a lot of ticks. What? <laughs> <laughs> we don't come to us for political advice. You know what I mean? They just, we're like, uh, they're entertainment. So. I know. Yeah. Great political advice. Although I will say one of the big things that changed in politics is that everything now is about authenticity, which is kind of what we do. You know, it's, you know, well, we don't have a lot of pretensions, you know? No, totally. We're very, that's why we're so bold and blunt. It's like, yeah. we're, we're not, yeah. And we were talking about with you, right? It's hard to date a, a comic <laughs> because yeah. we don't hold back. Right. Or a comic, or a comic, who thinks that they're funny and then you don't think that they're funny. Oh, but also no pretensions. Wait, going back to the no pretensions. Thing. The pretensions I'm looking at my shirt now, which I thought was good. And now I'm having some second thoughts, but like, no, I didn't have any, it looks like a high fashion shirt. I didn't have any pretensions. I told you right off the bat. It's from Etsy. It's a Cheryl Teague's vintage shirt. Girl, come on, Brigitte Bordeaux, Cheryl Teagues, come on. People who are watching out there, did you know you were getting all this? Come all on. this. Absolutely, and I wore black so you could wear your shirt and it pops. See, as a host, I have to let you pop, your clothes pop. Oh, this is a lot of pop. Like I'm looking at it, I'm going, ooh, that might've been more pop than she wanted. So, <laughs> more pop than I wanted, this is, this, I don't know. This might have been a mistake. I'm going to look at you instead. I can't believe how red I am, though. Ooh. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, that's okay. Red is good. Having color. Look, I'm, I have no color because they put so much makeup. I think my original color is lost. You should just do the, oh, I wake up like this. <laughs> yeah, with these eyelashes. Oh, my God. They're so uncomfortable. But I, I, I was like, I'm going to hang in there until we finish the podcast. My friend just started the... Uh, using the magnetic ones yeah yes yeah. yeah so i don't know how those work i didn't even do mascara to be honest with you i just it's a hey, thing you're beautiful you don't need it i can't see to put it on i take off my glasses to put it on and then i can't see and it's a problem so totally absolutely yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's start um i want to start from the very very beginning like what propelled you to do stand-up like way back. Oh, um, well, I used to be in musical theater and I was asked to leave because I can't sing. Am I beeping or are you beeping? No, it's me. I, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know, you know, it's Carbon so monoxide. Weird. If you start getting <laughs> sleepy, I'm going to call 911. You want to give me your address? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to like not, you know, I put do not disturb on my phone. And I close messages and it still, it still beeps. I'm like, and I'm a nerd. I'm supposed to be able to solve this. So I'm sorry about the beeps. The That's more okay. Beeps. My fridge is still on. Do you hear my fridge? <laughs> I've been telling, it's like, that's what every interview should be called. Dana and her fridge. Cause if you're really quiet, you can hear it go. 
and I'm oh, shutting cool. it off before things, but then I forget to turn it back on. <laughs> I'm like, I, I just got groceries. I, those can't go bad. You would have had to do the interview on Friday for me to shut off the fridge. So yeah, just, yeah. Dana Eagle, I should change my name, Dana Eagle and her fridge. And her fridge, yes. And actually it's fun because they're getting, the, the audience is now getting music. Like, <laughs> bing, shh, bing. that's great. Right. It, yeah, they can sample. Somebody can probably write a rap from this interview alone. Girl, we, we can write a rap. We should. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna say that's gonna be the bonus episode. Yeah, absolutely. But that's... only for people that show us their dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, follow us. And follow you. Yeah. Yes, if and you follow you. No, no, no. It has to be followed by a follow. Okay. Oh, okay. If not, no. My web person just said she's she's watching, so I should be telling people to follow now because she's gonna be like, "Why did you tell them to follow you?" I don't yeah, even know. We'll talk, girl, we'll talk about that. Don't worry. Well, at the end, the, you're gonna plug everything. So, okay. so, so let's start again. <laughs> like, what? Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have warned you. Danny Eagle and her fridge and her ADD. I didn't feel like taking the ADD medicine tonight. It makes me a little uptight, and I just wasn't in the mood. So, uh, two ADD. Got what you got. <laughs> I am total ADD too, and I'm trying to focus, but I'm distracted by your funniness. So we're um, and my fridge, yeah, and you're my face that's the color of a beet for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, and okay, we were we went to Dana Eagle the early years. Yes, I want the yes the start. It that all is. began in Princeton, New Jersey. Um, so. When I was a kid, I wanted to be in show business, but you know how showbiz kids are uh, very small for their age? And they're very cute, too. Yes. Neither. And neither going on. But you don't know when you're a kid. You're just like, no, I was pretty much the same size. I was one of those kids that shot up early. So I was one of the tallest kids in the class. Everyone thought I was going to be a giant. And uh, it just turns out, I just... I think because we ate so much fast food and it had the hormones in it that they get to the cows. So I got tall very quickly. And then I was like, I have talent and I did not. And then, uh, but I loved musical theater. So I was very into that. And then uh, after college, I was in a show that was on tour. And, but I had the only non-singing role. That was the problem. I, the only non and so for four months, I was like, listen, I have a non-singing role, but I actually can sing. And then after four months, they were like, you know what? You can't sing. <laughs> and you're annoying to be on a bus with. Oh you God. should go try stand-up comedy. And I did. And I was like, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm more suited for this. And it's the same thing of like, I wasn't, I'd been performing very mediocre level like since i was young and really i mean maybe like a camp i got into productions but my parents paid for camp you know yeah. so but once i started stand-up it was just so immediate of like yeah this is i knew and i wasn't do i took a weekend workshop with judy carter and i just knew immediately mm -hmm. that this was the thing there just wasn't a, and I wasn't good, but I just knew it. That's it. That's it. It was in your heart and you knew it. It's yeah. Forget that. And you forgot about the singing completely. It's like, forget singing. I just have my fridge. I still, I still sing. I've been working on dancing. Well, my first, uh, my first stand up album is called a night of Stand Up because they asked me not to sing. <laughs> That's available on my website, dannyeagle.com, <laughs> or iTunes. Did you try to sing, to be like a singing comedian ever? I've done a few, like, I've done a few, I do the song at the end of the show, and I've done a few satire songs, you know, where I, like, write the lyrics, and the one on my, the one on my album is, uh, you know, how, you know that song, The Candyman Ken? Yeah. Uh, I I do one called uh, the psychopharmacologist Ken, cause he mixes up the drugs, and makes my world look good like that. I love it. Thank you. That's great. You're so funny. 
We're going to uh, have to do five more episodes to get to the other. To the, well, life. I have like 20 questions and I, I'm just on one. <laughs> this is gonna yes, be I'm like gay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Grace and Dana, a comedy <laughs> musical special. Um, <laughs> Gay bipolar Jew with a lazy eye. <laughs> and, the Latina the thinks, and the Latina that thinks she's Brigitte Bardot. <laughs> you yeah. are. I, today, I felt like it, girl. Did you really? It makes a difference, huh? Well, it makes a difference when they make you look like this. <laughs> Look at the picture on my Facebook. It's like they make you, it's in, in the transformation. And I'm, I actually will post a video like from me being with no makeup and then with makeup. The transformation is just what they can do to make you look good. It's why, amazing. Why would you want to be honest? I mean, this is to me like the whole beauty of being home right now is like filters and, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. I mean, I obviously, even with the filters, they can't help me with my clothes. But, you know, but you, sh you, you should be like, this is my before. Really? Well, there's no filter on StreamYard where we are right now. There's absolutely no filter. So this is like, a bitch. I know. <laughs> I had that in my rider that I needed a filter. That was in my rider. <laughs> Did you not get my contract? Uh, my manager didn't tell me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, there's, I, we, we just keep going now. Question number two. You want to, you want to know question oh. number two? <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm gay. Oh, oh what's question two? Lot. Wait, I'm excited. This might be important. Yes. I want to learn something about me. Okay. 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 I'm ready. Oh, you're question ready two. for the question? Okay. Okay. So we're doing the questions. So you started musical theater. Your refrigerator is singing when you you're not. It? Do you want me to shut it? I'll I can totally it. hear it. It sounds very loud. I you love it. I'll shut it. Please hold. No, 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 no. Dana, come back. Oh, my God. No. Back. Your Just food is going to go to share. Make sure in the chat somebody reminds me to turn it on. I'll remind you. I just had a Trader Joe's run, so I need... Someone no, has no, no. keep it. Listen, I'm beeping. You are. It's part of the whole podcast today, so don't worry yeah. about it. Don't worry. Um, so, okay, and you're gay. So those are the three things we learned about you, <laughs> which I know except the refrigerator and the singing. And not uh, only is she distracted, she will distract the person in front of her. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I love it. It's fun. Uh, so do you have any rituals like when you go up on the stage do you prepare is there a way anything you do you chant or your anything oh, yeah there is something that I do um I I it's weird because uh you know how like your family has like the worst advice for you this was actually my dad's advice but I can never tell him or give him credit because if you get them a little bit of a win, then they're all the way through the door and they've got like tons of other advice. So I just, I got to yeah. shut them down, but I don't think he's watching. Um, visualize, <laughs> visualize yourself up there. And so like, I'll close my eyes and I'll visualize myself up there. And at first I wasn't sure, should I visualize it from my point of view of like seeing the audience or do I want to, I have OCD too. Should I want to visualize it from my point of view of like looking at, or do I want to visualize it from the audience's point of view? I usually just do the audience's point of view. Really? Yeah. And that helps you. Um, yeah. It helps, it, wow. Amazing. I, I, I don't know that's, I'm going to start trying that. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. Cause how do they see us? You know, we, I don't, I, I really don't, I don't think I want to know how they see me. Well, don't you have videos? I have videos. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that those are enough. Like, Isn't it funny like, when you do a show and you're like, you know, I think that was okay. Listen, they didn't laugh a whole, you know, I didn't get a lot of laughs on that new stuff, but I actually, I think it was good. It just needs to be smoothed out a little. And then you listen to the tape or you watch it and you're like, oh, that was not. No, oh, they, were not right. they were right. They were right. <laughs> that's one thing that people some who are not comedians don't know that what it feels like up there like sometimes you feel like oh my god I didn't do that well 
And then you listen to the, and you're like, damn, I, how did I not hear it? Do you yes. know? And, and, you know, sometimes it's like, like you said, you, you're like, okay, I was good. And then they're like, oh shit. Right. Right. My mom, well, my mom also said that I did one in, uh, in, I'm not Brett, Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it was just one of those there. It started, I was just like, oh, this can be a long, long show. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, just go through, don't even like, part of it was, it was in one of those big conference kind of rooms where the sound doesn't bounce. And so, cause my mom lives there, she was there. And so afterwards I was like, oh God. And uh, she goes, what, why, what do you think? I, she just kept saying, I don't understand why you think it went so bad. And I said, I don't know. I guess I just didn't enjoy myself. And she goes, who cares if you enjoyed yourself? You didn't pay for a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! Isn't that awesome. Your 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 mom is like, and your parents are kind of like bold, huh? I listen. They've given me years and years of advice. I'm picking the good parts, okay? I'm picking the good parts. Don't let it go to their head. But yeah, <laughs> she was right. But I do think that now sometimes, like if I'm, I'm like, this isn't fun. I'm like. You don't have to have fun. <laughs> well, you think so? I, I like to have fun. That's like, you know, that's my thing. Kick butt and have fun. That's my superficial uh, life. Uh, yeah. So if you don't have fun, I mean. I have fun when I do well. But I think. Yeah. I always find that the shows where I'm like, you are you watching, when you're watching a show and everybody's going up and one after the other, they're just like bombing. You know, it's like white audience Tuesday night and they're just bombing and you're like all right you gotta pick up come on you gotta go you gotta pick up and you're like chomping at the bit to get up there and then I get up there and I'm like oh no it's awful up here <laughs> yeah, so, no, no, no. <laughs> you're like it's gonna be okay you're trying to talk yourself into it's okay when I go up there it's gonna be fine and it's like no <laughs> every time I think to myself I got this is always, <laughs> always, that's always like, oh no. But it's yeah. like, when I, th have you ever had those moments where you're like, I, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Like either you took time off or you're just in a different frame of mind and you don't feel the words or we're involved in And you're like, I don't even know what my jokes, like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to say the right words in a row. And so then weird. suddenly you just get up there and it's like, Boom, and you have a great show. Yeah. But that other one always gets me. It's the one there. It's like, I got this. That's always the kiss of death for me. I know. We should just turn that out. That voice that says that. Just bye, bitch. Go away. Right. Why, why don't you wait and evaluate after work? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh this this is a very painful art form um but it's fun i i enjoy i i have fun i don't care even if i have a bad set i don't give a fuck like i have fun um i have fun because i like because of the things that i've become obsessed with like writing the jokes and my friends that are comedians and being with them i still get Nervous a lot, not as much as I used to. I mean, those first no. 10 years, I would just oh be driving. God, right? I'd just be going to a gig and I would just be like driving by a bank. And I was like, you could have just worked in a bank. Like you could, why didn't you do that? You could would have been, <laughs> you would have been on your way home. You would have been touching the money all day. And you know, it's just- Exactly. If you could get past, if you wanted enough to get past the nerves, then it- then yeah, totally, totally. And here is Brian. Uh, hi, Brian. Thank you for your Brian. comment. Dana gave me the best comedy advice. She told me that stand-up is being your best on your worst day. Oh, wow. Do you remember telling him that? Yes. I think, yes. And I think the context of it was, um, and he actually made it sound much smoother than I said it, but the context of it was, you know, those shows where you're just like in the zone and they're just yeah. magical that's um it's not like you get good and then you just have those all the time it's just that your worst shows are just better like there's your your worst shows when you're off your game are nice and solid and that's it and then your great shows are great you know everything just sort of moves up yeah i feel like i just took the heart out of that great advice that he put there as like <laughs> i should have just been like yeah that's exactly what i said
over explaining. <laughs> but... Over explained it. Over explained it. Yeah. It's okay. It hurts. That was a good over explanation. Yeah, because that's what I thought. I thought like once when you looked at other experienced comics and how they could just go in and destroy it, I was just like, that's what it's gonna be like. And certainly you get better and you get better mm -hmm. laughs per minute and you just have more command and that just becomes your normal yeah and then the things that feel awful are just they're still good yeah or they're good maybe a little shaky maybe a few too many pauses but they're not uh hopefully not bombing anymore yeah but sometimes people don't know sometimes people don't know when they're bombing i always know <laughs> Oh my God! How can you not know, right? Oh, I've seen a few comics who have no idea. They have no idea. They have laugh ears, like they hear laughter when. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> I never heard that term, laugh ears. That's a great term. Somebody they told me about ears. it. That's laugh awesome. ears. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I actually hear less laughter usually. Like I'm the opposite. Ew. Yeah, like uh, I'm never happy. Like, you know, if, if it's laughter amount, I'm never happy. But right, right. Yeah, because I'm kind of like a perfectionist. But that's why part of the other side of me is like, just go there and have fun and shut up, you know. Right. I, you know what? Yeah. Uh, Christina Pajitsky, she yeah. gave me good advice. So when we were doing Last Comic Standing, <laughs> I totally didn't get what reality shows are about, which is they're not really as much about the contest. Although the season I was on, they were very stand-up centric. Um, but they're really more about the personality and the backstory. I, I yeah. never got that. I just never, I was like, why do I need personality? I have jokes. Um, so she and I, like we were talking and then all of a sudden, cause it's a reality show, they come back and say, all of a sudden there's like a camera right there. And I'm like, oh, what, I didn't know, what am I supposed? And she just kept talking normally. And I asked her later, I said, is that because you've done reality shows or cause you do a podcast? And she said, yeah, I guess so. And she said, and I guess after a while, you just realize no one cares. No one's watching. No one really cares. No one, <laughs> that is the most that. relaxing advice. I'm like, no one really cares. No, but you're right. Nobody gives a fuck. And then you don't give a fuck if nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it feels so big in our heads. Like the yeah. first time I was making a TV appearance, like I was scared for months beforehand and then I was with a friend and all of her friends who were in law school and I said something like I'm going to be on Comedy Central and they were like oh what's that you know and it was like and to me it was like the biggest thing in the whole world they didn't even know what it was oh my god how can they not know I don't know it's so weird okay yeah. whatever and you're um, like no one cares no one cares no one get, totally. I'm telling you, no one cares. That's when you don't care. When you realize that, right. it's like, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, like like doing that. Like we were talking about <laughs> doing the podcast in lingerie, which you're gonna have a month to think I'm about. Doing oh, I'm supposed to start on my abs today. I have to write myself. Girl, a don't even worry about it. I told you, you can put a cushion. <laughs> I used to teach you stuff. <laughs> Now, for the lingerie, do we want abs or do we want arms? Both. Well, the arms you have, I'll teach you. You have to, like, be flexible. You're like, I want to look like a beast. <laughs> you don't have to contort to look good. That's what I learned. Being sexy hurts. More like, it's like Cirque du Soleil. I'm not kidding. Oh, wait. What do you want? Oh, yeah. You have to, like, suck your belly, like, chin oh. down. And the arms back and the boobs out and the belly. And it's like so much to remember. They have to repeat it over and over. My photographer is constantly I'm, repeating. I'm the same be absolutely sweating. And by the way, I just wrote abs on my grocery store list because I also have to go to pavilions. So I'm going to be like <laughs> honey mustard dressing, Tazo tea, and I'm going to be like abs? What's the part of that? <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You have a month. Well, maybe two months. I'll give you a couple of months. Eight, eight a months. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> uh, well, it's going to take you a month just to find that note on your desk. <laughs> <I Yeah>. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's very liberating because, you know, we're, I'm always self-conscious. We all are self-conscious of certain parts of your body. And then, you know, you're like, 
I don't give a fuck anymore. Whatever. This is what I have to work with. It was very liberating. Very I don't think that it care as much for like live or it's out there and then it's going to disappear. But there's nothing like when you Google your name and you're like, oh, where did that picture come from? Oh, I know those. Oh, my God. I know. But, you know, it's part of the whole deal. It's like we're not always perfect. Most of the time we are. But, <laughs> you know, 99 percent. But there's that one percent. You're going to find that ugly picture. We all have it. Right. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, but it's only one. It's okay. The rest are beautiful. You're beautiful. You're just, you photograph really well. You're adorable. Yeah. You're fucking adorable. So one bad picture, forget it. Don't worry. Okay. The worst is when people tag you. Oh. And you're like, why did you, do you realize? Right. Like, <laughs> because you know, they look good in the picture and you don't. And so then they tag it and they put it all over and it's like, I know. One eye closed, one eye yeah. open. <laughs> like that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, with Green Sprague and with Dana. I know. It's like, they didn't wow. care. <laughs> I had a friend that did that to me all the time. Oh, listen, I was, I was on an event. I was drunk with my friend. We were like, yeah, we're promoting a show. My belly, I, you know, I went there, the red carpet, that looked great. Then by the time I had like, I don't know how many shots of tequila. I, my belly was out. I was like this, I'm like, hey, and guess what? <laughs> he took my picture with the belly out. I looked like, hey, what's up? You know, and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, and it's just, he showed me, he posted them. What? I know. I know. Now, you know, yeah, he asked for permission because he knows I'll, I'll just. You should unfriend him. I would unfriend him. <laughs> and he is car. <laughs> <laughs> That that's the worst. But okay, back to the interview. Back okay. to the interview. Question number three. We're thirty six minutes into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to know, and I always ask comics this: What is your best set ever, and your worst set ever? Sweet Jesus. Um. I mean, there's a lot of bad sets to choose from, definitely. Um, <laughs> <We all> do. <laughs> but like the worst, like the most that had a lot of emotions in them, mixed emotions, like fear and anger and sadness. You know, those are those bad sets. It's funny. I feel I don't, maybe I'm getting old and they all just run together. Believe me, I'm not being humble. Like there's uh, humble. I've had plenty of sets where I've just eaten it like like I remember more like moments where I did something of I think I think it uh I, I was middling at the improv and this guy was oh I just thought of another one too this guy was like right there and I said something it looked like he had a bandage on his ear and as soon as I said it I saw it I was like do you hurt your ear and he's like no I'm he was deaf and that's why our conversation was going so weird and it was just like I can't recover from this. No, you can't. Oh my God. No. That was bad. That was bad. There was no, I didn't have this. Yeah, there's no saving that one. There's no, there's saving, no it. saving it. You know what the, you know what I pr problem I still suffer from is when somebody says something in the audience and then they all laugh at it, but I didn't hear it. And then I sit there going, do I want this repeated? Was I just like, am I just asking them? to heckle myself is it like sixth grade when I went like hey what are you guys laughing at you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that one's always really tough for me um, yeah another one was I was doing a show in Atlanta and it just never occurred to me this guy I just did was doing a little crowd work what's your name what brings you he's like I'm a friend of your brother's. And you know how it's just kind of like, these are two different worlds. I, it just threw me so off. I didn't know who he was. My brother never said he had a friend coming. It's like now it would be more, more typical, but still not with somebody saying, oh, I have a friend coming that might come to your show tonight or whatever. But it was just, I wasn't, it was an opening for someone else. That one I just couldn't recover on either. It was just it just threw me off for the rest of the set. It was almost like he said Mars. I had no idea what he was talking about. Like I couldn't even get it in my head. Of, wow. That's right. I have a brother. 
my brother has friends. This is still one of my brother's friends. Like it just, it wouldn't compute in my head. It was just yeah. too much for my precious little head. Oh so. my God. Well, when we're up there, we're in a different time zone and a different, it's like a matrix, yeah. right? Yeah. Like everything yeah. happens slower up there. Right. Right. right? Yeah. W when people say three minutes, and uh, they're like, well, three minutes is really quick. And it's like, oh, three minutes could also be a very long time. <laughs> yeah, like, am I done? Trust me. Can you give me the light? <laughs> like 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about those shows where you think it's going really shitty? And you're like, I just can't wait to get off. And then something happens and you miss the light. And you end up doing like 20 <laughs> minutes more on the show where like you wanted off hours ago. <laughs> You're like, what am I doing? How am I, I qualified to do this? <laughs> oh my the god. Thing no, is, it's the only like there's not a lot of other uh careers out there where when people show up, number one, they have no idea what they're showing up to. And right. number two, it's each one is gonna be completely different. Absolutely. I, I just did. I know, don't listen. Don't worry about question four. No one cares. So no, but I just thought it was something like, and also I can't build in every time I go, well, that's not happening again. Next time I'm asking, like, I'm not doing a fundraiser and paying 20 bucks for parking. No way. Right? <laughs> gotta cover my, you know, or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or letting them know they can't tape. Every time I do that, um, something else comes up. I was asked to do a show last week and then i found out two days before it's a pre-tape they're going to pre-tape it with just a few people so they and i thought okay i'm not thrilled about that but fine well then i find out it's not even that they have a comedy festival they're posting it for five days and i was like i never agreed to <laughs> like like you know i didn't want to spend a ton of time on it because i was just like it was good money but like just enough where it's like to me the more time you spend on something the more you're dragging out the money so I was just like, it's good, good enough, never asked for a contract. And suddenly it's like two days before, and I'm like, what? What? <laughs> you want me That's to a lot. That's a lot. Like, they should have told you that up front. I know. They I was know. like, the first thing they say at a live performance is you cannot record the show. And now you're like right. recording it. And it was the same. It's like texts going back and forth. And there were other, and I was just like, after a while, see, now I'm giving away my negotiating thing. But this is why I should let those things go through my manager. I was like, it was a Saturday, like, when all this was happening. And I was like, I, I just want my time back. Uh, so I, to my, in my head, I was like, you're not going to be able to negotiate this. They already decided, do the show or don't do the show. And that's it. But get your, I was like, just get your time back. Because, you know, pandemic and being home for 10 months hasn't been enough time for me. <laughs> I need more. So we talked about this. <laughs> it's me. I'm the problem. I, I suspected it before. I know now. <laughs> so that what have you learned from the pandemic? I'm the problem. Like You're I always just thought that was always the excuse of like, well, I'm traveling and I have a show and then I have to do all the stuff during the day and um and so everything is always uneven. You know, you fly somewhere, you do a show, you wake up. Not as much, because people don't do radio as much anymore, but, you know, stuff like that. And and so it's like, well, of course my sleep isn't normal. And of course I'll work for a while and then burn out and stare into space for another two weeks. And now I'm like, nope, that's not the reason. <laughs> I'm like, that is not the reason at all. I could stare into space and I cannot sleep and not get anything done all at the same time. Is wow. It? you That's, that's the ADD and that's multitasking. That I'm one or the other. I'm one or the other. I'm like, yeah, I'm the all in or like, you can't catch me at all. You're like, what did, did she just, did she dead? It's like, I stopped answering things. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. You killed me. <laughs> but I know it's so busy up here. It's so there's so I'm like, it seems like I'm not doing anything, but there's a lot that's happening oh, up no. here. I feel you. It's like a bad neighborhood in there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go there. <laughs> it's awful. 
It's all yeah. going there. Yeah. No, I feel you. I totally feel you. My mind works like a thousand miles an hour. And I, I have like literally five thoughts at the same time. One time I was typing a uh, messaging on Facebook with my mom in Spanish and somebody else in English at the same time. Like my brain is so weird. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. It's so bizarre. Maybe I won't learn Spanish. That's going to just be one more thing. <laughs> I shouldn't try and fit anything. I'll else. teach you. I'll I teach you. I'm gonna try and learn Spanish and Garage Band, and now I'm like, maybe I shouldn't try and fit anything else in. You need someone like me. I can teach you that stuff. Spanish and Garage Band. Oh yeah, I'm a nerd. Remember? See, I help this... you with Garage Band. I I help you with that. See, now you just had a little Brazilian accent. You're like Garage, garage Band. band. Yeah, really? I know the Garage it's Band. I know. You know what happens? Because we talked about Spanish, my brain was like, oh, Espanol, let's mix a little bit. <laughs> so it's like, oh, You're having a fiesta in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, I love that. I love that saying of like, it's a bad neighborhood up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because, you know, horrible pandemic and <laughs> political situation, pretty freaking yeah. nuts. Yes. And everybody's all upset. And really, it doesn't change my mood that much because I'm like, I can't be bothered with real I problems. I have so many imaginary ones going on yeah. that your real ones don't, they don't trouble me at all. Yeah, like, no, I agree. Yeah. And so it sounds like a bit of a relief. <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> Communism? We're going to be taken over. I'm going to be told where to go and what to do. That it's sounds good. Thing. I don't make good decisions anyway. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'll take them. Girl, we're on the same page. I'm like, there's nothing I can do. So I'm just going to like do photo shoots, do a podcast in lingerie, uh, and, and enjoy my time. And there's, you know, what are you going to do? I'm serious. You can, you have no control over it. Somebody anything. has to come in and take the the fonts off my computer. There's too many fonts on my computer. I could get back so much in my day if someone would just please. And then Adobe gave me more fonts and then no. they let me download some other fonts for free. And then I do my website myself. That's been, yeah. That's a lot. Well, call me for nerdy stuff, for like tech stuff. I can help you. Big mistake. You just made such I know, a big mistake. I know, I'm an idiot. I know, I know, I know. I told you I spent two hours Did with- Did you know back ends like you do because my website is, uh, well, I don't want to give them a free advertisement, especially since they just put me on hold for 20 minutes. Um, but it's Wix. I do the Wix one. Yeah. Do you do like WordPress? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do WordPress? Uh, no, I do Wix, but I, I can do, I've done all my websites, but now I consolidated them all in one. We're talking about stuff. <laughs> oh, people want to know about comedy. I forget. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Tell them to write their questions. I know, but people are learning about Wix now. I can do Wix, anybody. I'll charge, not you. Yeah, I do it for free for you, but I'll charge anybody else. Um, so let's go. Okay, okay. look let's at me. I'm shutting sure up. Just tell me to drink. I'll drink, and then I can shut up, and you can yes. ask questions. Drink, drink. There you go. Uh, question number four. <laughs> so, <laughs> forty-seven minutes is like ten over twelve minutes per question. <laughs> this is the best. But now it feels like a challenge. Now it feels like, <laughs> let me see how much I can slow her down. Let me see how much I can pull her back. It's like yeah. when I annoy people, it's like I'm going to annoy them into liking me. You just wait. It's like I'm not going to stop annoying you. It's just annoy you into liking me. You totally don't annoy me. I can totally follow it and just go in. And it's my job as the host. <laughs> like, ask the question. So I'm focused. All right. Question number four. Okay. Now, seriously. So I, I, I want to ask you before it's like five hours and people, <laughs> you know, we go for five hours. Okay. You worked as a creative consultant on the Wanda Sykes comedy special. And I love Wanda Sykes. Oh my yeah. God. Oh my God. God. Tell she me all awesome. about that. Tell me all. I want to know everything. <laughs> like the opposite of me. <laughs> 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 like just everything the opposite just takes in like very you know obviously very dynamic and magnetic on stage 
Yes. But then backstage at the show, very cool, very calm, zillions of things going on around her. Don't you hate when people go, oh, we're going to have you do a VIP meet and greet before the show. I'm like, why don't you let me focus on the thing I was brought in to do, and then we'll add the bonus at the end, you yeah. know? I'm like, I don't, I don't want to see their faces in the room. And then, yeah, her just like, they come in and she, she just does, she just gets quiet and does what she has to do. Um, also a remarkable memory and like, and, and you know, what really pissed me off. This is what really pisses me off. She, she gets a laugh on the fucking setup. I know, because she's so funny. There's something about her that she just exudes funny, right? I know. It's just I know. that the first people? time I saw that, I was like, "Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, like what am I gonna do? Like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> how, how am I gonna? They're getting a laugh on the setup. <laughs> she is one of those. No, it's just." Yeah, oh, no, yeah. she was awesome. But, you know, you definitely learn that thing of um, there's just so many more things to it of mm -hmm. really being able to pull everything together. She would have gotten through all your questions by now. I'll say that. She would have answered them and done them all. <laughs> I would be out of questions. I'd be like, oh, only half hour in. She answered all my 20 questions. Damn. <laughs> I know. And then maybe there would have been a little stretch. She could have stretched whatever you needed. Yeah, oh, that's she amazing. Just, like I go a little uh, crazy when stuff comes up. I mean, I, I I learned to push down, but I go a little nuts when stuff comes up that I wasn't expecting. Um, right. Just the kind of like just being thrown in there thing. And yeah. really the difference between when I push it down versus I don't is, um, you know, mostly like uh, is, is this like, it's a job. This is part, if it's part of the job, you just suck it up and you do it, you know, kind of like we, the VIPs want to meet you beforehand. You know, that's one of those things where I'm like, you have to put it in the contract before, before, you know, but that's one of those things where it's like, if it's not in there and then it happens, you're just going to sound like an asshole when you say right. no. like a diva and you're not a diva, but I understand well, you need to focus. And here I am. And yeah. here I am. Luckily I, you yeah. are really <laughs> luckily i grew up in that period of time where it was like nobody cares about your feelings <laughs> nobody cares nobody, nobody cares, cares about your problems much, right now they care too much but thanks to millennials everybody cares too much about feelings there has to be some kind of balance right yeah there does right. because it's a muscle like there there is definitely a part of it where some of us are more predisposed to things than others, but we, we have a range. And so, you know, if you're like me and the range is there, it's like, okay, well, at least work at the top of your range, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. my mom always, I was starting it for like dinner parties at my place. That's, I'm not, that was not the right thing for me. And my mom said, well, if you keep doing it, you know, you'll get used to it. That didn't. I, I might have gotten better at it. I did not get, I was terrible. It was awful. It's too many people, too many different yeah. voices happening. Plus I had yeah. to get the food. I'm just like, I couldn't relax and enjoy myself. But you know, I know people who love throwing parties. And I'm like, I know. Oh. Well, they get help. They get people to help them. They got waiters, you know, like, put, yeah, no. If you're by yourself, it's torturous. I, I don't do it. I do one person at a time. I can only do that. And even then it's stressful. Do you like talking to groups of people at once? No, you know, um, I don't actually. I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one person. And at a party, believe it or not, I go and um, kind of like scope and, and see who I want to talk to. But I'm kind of like prefer people approaching me. I'm kind of like a queen. Oh, <laughs> uh, you hold court. You're yeah. Like it's like, you want to come talk to me? Go for it. But I don't talk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I, I buckle up and, and feel weird. I also feel weird when my different groups of friends are together, like on my birthday. There's nothing more stressful. Because you don't know how they're going to react to each other, right? Have you ever had any shit go down at one of your parties with your friends? 
Well, not friends with gang you, I, I feel like you would have that. <laughs> not friends with gang members. Lesbians, close. But, um, no, I haven't. But it's like, I think I worry too much of this everyone having a good time. Is that person stuck with that person? You know, and it's like, well, why should they be having a good time? I'm not having a good time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I am paying for all this shit. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not having a good time. This is not good. Not good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, we have like six minutes, right? Because we go for an hour. Well, what I, happens at six minutes? StreamYard only goes for six minutes? Or you think no, I six, go for six more minutes. People have been writing you saying we're done with her. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> That's why you have to come to Lay Down Comedy. You have to do my Lay Down Comedy podcast. That's why, that's why you have to take your clothes off so we could shut you up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's lingerie. It's not taking okay. your clothes off. No, it's not. Look, I'm a swim teacher. I was a swim teacher for a long time. I was a shit, what don't you do? I know. I do everything. It's stupid. I know. It's it's. Don't even ask. But Is no, I was a coach. Yes, I was a competitive swimmer for a long time. And medals and everything. I went to the nationals <laughs> and all that shit. And so I teach swimming when I'm a little broke. Like I teach swimming and it's super fun. Um, so I am in a bathing suit. So I'm like, what is the difference between being in a bathing suit and lingerie? It's the same thing. So it's really, I don't really wear either. Way? Bathing suit, I wear um, like little surf shorts like that. That's well, you can wear lingerie that's like little shorts and a bra okay. or a petty. Yeah, yeah, a bra is kind yeah. of like a bathing suit, sort of. I can't believe you. I was on the swim team as terrible. Oh, as really? Oh, wow. I was I was on the swim team in high school, but it was they just let me stay on. Like, I think I was allowed to swim in like one race the year I was on, and it was just because it was my birthday <laughs> and I still came in fifth. And then when I was a kid, I was on the swim team and, uh, oh, I cried. I cried at my yeah. first swim. Did you enjoy swimming at least? I enjoyed it up until the meet. Like the only reason I even got on the swim team was because I was swimming in the public pool and they were like, you have to get out. We have swim practice. And I was like, well, when is swim practice? And they're like, well, it's happening now. And I was like, well can they just swim over? Like I just argued until they were finally like, do you want to just be on the team? And I was like, okay. And so then I went home. I was like, I'm on the swim team. <laughs> and so then I just kept swimming. A guy kept telling me what to do. And I was like ignoring him. Cause I liked singing underneath the water. Did you ever do that? No. Okay. This wasn't the high school swim team. This was like when I was 11. <laughs> I just swim. And then suddenly like we have a meet and I like, I just hadn't thought of it. And I just got up there and there's like a gun, you know, and shoot that gun off. Yes, and I just so. start crying and I had to like stop everything. And they brought my mom over and you should like, you should know I come from a family of athletes and I'm not an athlete. My mom, and she was like, okay, calm me down. They go to start the race again. I just start crying again. Oh, and then finally my mom is like, you don't have to do it if you don't want. And I was like, no, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so they switched me to the outside lane. So that oh, while that I'm is slow lane. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. The middle ones are the fastest and the what it's like the oh. turtle. Yes, yes. So they switched me to the outside lane so that my mom so that when I turned my head I could see my mom walking. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Every so this is how like my whole life has been. Like Yes. I always go for like these big things and then I'm there and I'm like what were you like? What were you thinking? You can't do this. Like that's. I feel like everything is like that for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then. Yeah. It, well, just, in your head, you're like, I can do it, and then when it's time to do it, you're like, shit. I did not think I this. Did not have said that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think this through. I was. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I didn't account for a lot of details. <laughs> you're like, let's do it. I can do it. Gun in the air, boom, you swim. 
Okay, but yeah. can I give comedians advice? That has to be somewhere on your questions, right? Oh my, how did you know that? I know that. Yeah. Oh, I knew. have you yeah. been like? I'm psychic. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I told you. Okay. So yes, because we have like a couple of minutes. <laughs> because this is coming from somebody who's not a detail person. Most important thing you can learn as a comedian is the word perpetuity. <laughs> like for fucking ever. <laughs> Don't sign any contracts that say perpetuity. You've just sold yourself or your act or your CD. Your into soul. Like, yeah. Into into like sex trafficking or something. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you sold your soul, the body, your spirit, everything. You're, I don't want to sell my hair, though. That's the only thing I'm not selling. Yeah, that's nice Anything hair. else, it's for sale. <laughs> That's that's my advice for comedians. Don't ever sign something with the word perpetuity. <laughs> that's the best advice Thank ever. You. And yes, they they liked us to sign in perpetuity a lot. <laughs> I'm like, what? This is gonna be on the phone? That's neat. You're gonna you're starting a new network on a phone, which is like five years ago. And you're like, Wait, yeah. this is gonna be around forever and I'm never gonna get paid for it ever again. <laughs> well, like major corporations advertising on it. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, when is that going to end? Perpetuity. Oh, is that the fall? What is that? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> now that was genius. I love it. And uh, we couldn't talk about your book, which is fine because I didn't have a, the book. There you go. There's a book. How to be depressed, a guide. And if anybody can can do a guide, how to be depressed. <laughs> you can't tell. But that's what happens. This is what happens when this camera shuts off. This that's what happens. I do have days like that where I go, you're looking like the cover of your book. It's nice exactly. that you have a book. You don't really want to look like the cover of your book. <laughs> yeah, I also have it in German, Turkish, and French. It was published in all languages too. So. Do you have it in Spanish? I don't have it in Spanish, but I own the rights to the book now because uh, that was not a contract with perpetuity. And so I, now they've reverted to me. So I'm going to try and make a digital one, but maybe we'll do it in Spanish too. Uh, I, mean. I feel like you could be depressed in Spanish. Oh, you yeah. Never met a depressed Spanish person before. But you know what? No, it's, it's more romantic. Oh. In Spanish. Oh, like heartbreak? Yeah, you're depressed and you cry, like telenovelas. Oh, yes, I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of hot too. Yeah, yeah, and it's very dramatic. Yeah. Yeah, very, very dramatic. Everything is very dramatic. Right. But the food is good. The so. food is good, yeah. 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 So. And the, the men are sexy. Well, that really doesn't matter. Oh my God. Sorry, I forgot for a second. <laughs> I mean, when you were saying crying, I was picturing a woman crying, and I was like, oh, that'd be nice too. I made a few women cry. It wasn't for the reason I wanted to be, but uh, <laughs> I've made a few men cry too. So yeah, so that's what comedians do. That's we forgot. We forgot that other you're supposed to think before the words come out of your mouth. That's exactly what happens. That's the problem. And that's why hashtag this is why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm single. It's bad neighborhood up here. Bad and neighborhood. Flying out over here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the ammunition right there. <laughs> got some random fire. <laughs> totally. Don't let the red lipstick fool you. <laughs> well, that was an accidental. I forgot to put a lock. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my god, I could talk to you for like hours and hours. We need. No, I'm not even drunk either. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you need it. This is fun. We need to do this again, whether it's in lingerie or here again. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll you know do. What? It. <laughs> I wore a dress because I was supposed to drop off that book. I'm just gonna show up at your house. Be like, remember we said we were gonna hang out. Oh, what is this weird? <laughs> it's not weird, is it? <laughs> you can we're friends now. now. <laughs> Parking is a bitch around here, but you you can come here anytime. No, for real. I'm in West Hollywood. I'm very close. Oh, to you. you're like so close. Yeah. 
these legs walk. Actually, today they're a little trial hairs, but they generally walk. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. All right, girl. So we'll we'll do this again because we need to talk. I have like 16 other <laughs> that we need to address. <laughs> so um so yeah definitely i want you back and uh so we'll we'll end the podcast anything you want to promote like your Instagram? oh yeah i do but i just want to say like this is one of those where it's like i laugh so much and you laugh so much and i'm kind of going like was this just funny to us or was that just <laughs> <laughs> i don't know oh yeah i do want to promote things if you go to my website danaeagle.com i actually have a free gift on there i had a i did a show um, at the U.S. Comedy Arts Festival, and it was a it was a solo, show. so it's kind of like a play. And yeah. because I couldn't deliver content for the pandemic, I remastered the audio, and I also put out the script, and that is free. But when I read you my website, it's not going to be free, so you better get it quickly. And uh, that I should probably. What else am I supposed to promote? Your book, your um, the book, social oh, media, I an album, I have stuff like that. Oh, other stuff I'm gonna do. Oh, I'm gonna be doing a a, a web series called Tragic and Hilarious. So I'll tell oh, you, yeah. you're gonna be on it. Yay! I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. So, and I have other stuff too. I always forget this part. This is why I don't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how did you go? Great time. Did you sell a lot of merch? I left it at the hotel. <laughs> we had a great time. Oh, yeah. I have to, I have to pay to bring all those books back home and be on the flight. <laughs> My shows were great, though. Well, good for you. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I know. I feel you. I feel you. They're a pain in the ass to carry all that shit around. Oh, that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to change everything over to digital downloads. There you go. That's so much easier. I don't Every care if they steal it. If they steal yeah. it, they give it to all their friends. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for We're six minutes over. Facebook yeah, didn't kick you off. It's totally fine okay, because you're gonna have to just hang up because I'm gonna just keep talking. <laughs> 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 no I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Do I hit leave? You want me to leave? Yeah, no, no, I'll I'll leave us. Don't worry. You leave you first. Well, now I feel really insecure. Okay. <laughs> After. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you enjoyed Dana because she's hilarious. Thank you so much. And I will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. PST. All right, guys. Bye. Don't leave us. We'll leave you. <laughs> <laughs>